Hey guys, welcome to our lecture series where we are discussing previous year's question papers in a unit wise sequence for data warehouse subject TYBACIT semester 6. So in last lecture we are already done discussing many of the question. In this particular lecture we will start our discussion with question number 9 that is describe virtual data warehouse and central data warehouse which was asked in the year 2015. Now remember one thing. Uh, in 2015, they were asked such question, but it might possible in next, uh, uh, I mean, in a coming year, they might ask you like, what is data redundancy and types of uh, those uh, data redundancies. So both the questions are similar only. There is only a difference that we start discussing from data redundancy, and in data redundancy, we have these three types. As you can see, virtual, central, and distributed data warehouse. So we have similar answer for both this question. So that's why I have just added this much part is extra here. So remember, let's start discussing data redundancy. So what do you mean by data redundancy? Redundancy means a duplication of a data. I mean, we are going to create a copy of any particular data tables or any anything uh, whichever we are required for our day to day operations. For that reason, we start creating a local copy. So that is what we mean by data redundancy. So data redundancy, there are essential three levels of data redundancy that enterprise should think about. First is virtual or point to point data warehouse. Second is central or uh, that is central data warehouse. And third is distributed data warehouse. Now remember, in this particular question, they have only asked about virtual data warehouse and central data warehouse. But this particular part is extra. That is also I'm going to discuss in this particular topic. So let's start discussing the same. So if we talk about virtual or point to point data warehouse, as you can see in this particular diagram, we have multiple things that is we have multiple storage or data stored at some particular location. This is our storage location. Now here we are talking about this particular layer is OLTP that is online transaction processing. So whenever we a uh, user end user demands for any particular uh, data that transaction should take place with the help of this particular layer that is called as OLTP application layer. Then we have end users many end users at this particular level. So what is the what is the main reason behind this so end users are responsible to take out some analysis that is olap online analysis uh, analytical process same way this particular virtual data warehouse will help them to take some decision that dss stands for decision support system so at this particular top level we have something that is called as olap and dss application layer so virtual data warehouse as you can see we have point to point connection that is end users are connected with only specific data which is required for them for their day to day operations or to take some decisions. So those particular data are only accessible at this particular point of time. So let's just discuss something brief about this a virtual data or a point to point data warehouse strategy means that end users are allowed to get operational database directly from any specific points. Now we can use whatever tools we want for this particular details and this uh, technique is called as data access network. Now what are the advantages of using this virtual data warehouse or point to point data warehouse it is flexible. No data redundancy means we are directly connecting our users with some specific data which we have stored at some XYZ locations. So we don't need to create multiple copy or duplicate copy of the same data and hence no data redundancy provides end user with most current corporate information. So we are dealing with uh, current transaction uh, end user always need data for some fiscal year what we call or a current year. So we are not uh, dealing or we are not emphasizing much on historical data. So here as you can see we only dealing with most current corporate information and that is what we mean by virtual data warehouse. I hope this particular point is clear. 
now we'll start discussing about second point that is central data warehouse now as the name suggests central that means we are going to store our database or data warehouse at some central location so as you can see here we have one diagram for the same so this is a central data warehouse let me just zoom in. so this is our central data warehouse as you can see here and we have metadata created for this central data warehouse so that we can easily find out required information now executives these are the top most executives we can say managers or some uh, top most ceo or chief executives of some company who need to take some decisions so this central data warehouse also helps them to take decisions so as you can see dss stands for decision support system so this centralized architecture helps topmost executive to take some important decision with respect to their business and at the same time if we talk about end users so with the help of oltp that is online transaction processing are all the end users are directly connected with this particular central data warehouse i hope this particular point is clear and how can they find basically the required information with the help of metadata which we have created for this particular central data warehouse metadata is data about data so i hope this particular point is clear so let's just start discussing our theory part so as you can see when we talk about central data warehouse uh, is a single physical uh, database that contains all data for specific functional area department it might be for any particular type of a category as you can see for a department we can say for some division or some for uh, for some enterprises as well some data warehouse are often selected where there is a common need for informational data and there are large number of end users already connected to central computer network and we'll just discuss few of the advantages so as you can see security ease of management and what are the disadvantages uh, performance implication why because uh, everyone tries to access data from one particular location only so that is going to uh, hamper our performance at some point of time same way it is very expensive uh, to increase the size of our database why because uh, again and again we have to upgrade our original server or systems at times it is also non reliable because we are uh, dependent on any one particular location only and if that location is get uh, if that location is busy i mean um, if it is suffering with uh, too much uh, uh, user requests then it might be not reliable why because it will take much 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 time to uh, to generate the result now the last type is distributed data warehouse that is the third type here what do you mean by distributed as the name suggests we are going to distribute our data so among many different uh, users so distributing so as you can see distributed are those which certain components are distributed across number of different physical databases so uh, locally we are going to keep one copy for that particular office uh, suppose if we have multiple branches uh, of any company in um, uh, india so for example we have uh, one company's branches located in mumbai chennai kolkata delhi now all these four offices need some sp type of a specific data required for each and every point of time so what we are going to do we'll just keep a local copy of those particular data with them so that they don't need to again and again approach to a main server or centralized server for those simple or uh, some uh, daily required data and uh, hence we can uh, uh, reduce the burden of our original server as well as we can make the process faster for those offices as well and hence we go for distributed data warehouse so as you can see distributed data warehouse are those in which certain components are distributed across number of different physical databases increasing large organization are pushing uh, pushing decision making down to lower levels i hope this particular point is clear now we'll start discussing next question as you can see next question is explain snowflake schema now remember it is very much similar to star schema which we already discussed in previous lecture so let's start discussing snowflake schema so i have added one diagram here as you can see this is the diagram for snowflake schema so what is star schema where all the dimension are connected to one central location or some fact table 
as you can see we have multiple dimensions here for example time dimension store dimension customer dimension and product dimension so we have four dimensions so this particular architecture is star schema but when we talk about snowflake schema so the star schema is again subdivided remember it is again denormalized what do you mean by denormalization that means dividing one table into multiple sub tables so a uh, time dimension or we can say one table which basically stores timely information for any particular type of a data so what we have done we have divided this time dimension into year wise month wise and week wise so this is the subdivision of one dimension or one uh, parent table so that is what we mean by denormalization what we mean by normalization means uh, uh, from multiple table we combine it and make one single table that is what we mean by normalization and denormalization vice versa so uh, snowflake schema is extension of star schema so as you can see we have this star architecture here uh, exactly same like star structure only but here our few of our dimension or few of our table are again subdivided into small different parts that is what we mean by snow like schema i hope this particular point is clear and remember this is one of the most important question university always ask a question either on a star schema or on a snowflake schema and if you are very lucky they might ask you both the question and both the questions are interdependent on each other so let's start discussing snowflake schema as i already said it is an extension of star schema where each of point the star explodes into more more sub points so as you can see we have product dimension which is again divided in one table then we have time dimension as you can see which is again subdivided in three different parts that is we have divided time in year wise then we have divided uh, time in month wise and again in day wise format now for example we can say that the time dimension that has consists of two different hierarchies hierarchy means a tree like structure so we can divide year into month and that is into day or we can divide it into week wise and that we we can again divide that week table into day wise format so we we will have four lookup tables here now remember the tables uh, which we have sub divided those are called as lookup tables so which type of lookup table we have in the under time dimension we have one lookup table which gives us information in a year wise format then we have second table that gives us information in a month wise format then we have third lookup table which gives us information in a week wise format and then the same way other table gives us information on a day wise format now as you can see here year is connected to months which is then connected to days so this is the only basic format i hope this particular point is clear it is very 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 simple concept in uh, in, in turn the main advantages of slow, uh, snowflake schema uh, that improvement in query obviously if we have subdivided uh, our uh, data or a main table or some dimension then uh, we just need to fire a query on uh, any particular sub part of that dimension only so our query will uh, give us result in a much faster way so that is one of the main advantage that it improves the performance that is the main part and the disadvantage of this particular schema is uh, it needs additional maintenance why because we have created many different table uh, from one dimension and hence we need to maintain all those tables as well and uh, that is the only reason we need extra uh, some information i hope this particular part is clear and now we'll start discussing the last part for unit 1 last question that is a differentiation between operational database system and informational database system um uh, actually i have uh, forgot to mention uh, year here it is 2014 this question is asked in the year 2014 so as you can see we have i have divided it in such a way operational system and informational system so let's start discussing the same so what we mean by operational system operational system as you can see where we talk about current data that is what we mean by operational system so uh, if i am dealing with any per particular type of a data uh, for a current year for example if we talk about a college database where we are dealing with students uh, 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 
basically how many admission uh, uh, we, uh, how many students admitted for FI BACIT, uh, SYE BACIT or TY BACIT. So that is our current data. So as you can see current value is the data contained, data structure is optimized for transactions. So uh, also we have excess frequency is very high because we have segregated uh, historical as well as current data uh, as we know what is data warehouse which uh, basically helps us to keep historical as well as current data now if we directly fire a query on data warehouse then it, it is very tedious task why because we have a lot huge amount of data stored at one location and if we if we try to fire a query at that particular part then it is very difficult so and hence we need to segregate current data with historical data so if we are working with current year then we don't need uh, data about previous year students so what we are going to do we are going to create operational system which is only going to keep current data which is required for our day-to-day -day operations so as you can see response time is increased we uh, we can manage large number of users which are current users only and at the same time data access type is very easy we can easily read update or delete some data as well and uh, users are predictable and are repetitive so I hope this particular point is clear and when we talk about informational means we need information with respect to our college uh, uh, performance like uh, what is the performance how what are the percentage of student who cleared this year and what are the percentage of student who cleared previous year or before uh, three years so if we want to take the performance like uh, whether our uh, performance students performance is increasing or decreasing we need to consider all these points so and hence we need to deal with old data as well why because we are we need some information with respect to our organization or with respect to our company or with respect to our college so as you can see data is archived derived and summarized then data structure is optimized by a complex query obviously if we have a huge amount of data uh, based on which we are going to analyze a trend uh, which type of a trend like uh, last year 60% student uh, cleared a TYB ACIT exam uh, semester 6 then before that in the year 2014-13 70% uh, uh, students cleared the exam now we can directly just find out what are the reasons that uh, in the year 2013 and 14, 70 percent uh, uh, we achieved a result at 70 percent, and in 15 or 16, uh, the result is decreased by 10 percent directly. So we can just analyze the trend, like which professor were there uh, to help those students, and which professors are now uh, to help the students, and what are the performance of those uh, professors. So we can just directly take some decision based on that. Now when we talk about accessing, accessing frequency is very low because we are dealing with huge amount of data and same way when we talk about, remember when we talk about historical data at data warehouse then we are only dealing with read operation. We are not supposed to make any changes in the historical data and as you can see data type is read only and uh, same way usage is ad hoc and random and response time will take several seconds or minutes or sometimes if our query is too complex then it might take several hours as well and relatively it is smaller number of user who basically deal with this particular type of a data not each and every one so i hope this particular point is clear from next lecture i'll start discussing about unit 2 as you can see we have two question i have listed out here so from next particular lecture i'll start discussing about unit 2 i hope unit 1 is very much clear to everyone now if you have any query or doubt as i said you can just ping me on this particular email id just a second you can ping me on this particular email id and at the same time you can follow me on this particular channel for more future lectures and uh, one more thing we uh, I'll just provide you a uh, download link for this particular document in a video description section. So from there you can just download this particular document. Thank you.